problem number 29 is related to motion of the charged particle in magnetic field. When a charged particle enters in a magnetic field at right angle, it follows a circular path. These two paths are semicircular path here. Naturally, in these two regions, magnetic field is normal to this bolt. When a charged particle enters at right angle in magnetic field, the radius of that charged particle is given by the relation R equal to mv by qv and time taken for a complete rotation is given by the relation T equal to 2 pi m upon qv and in magnetic field, force is given by F equal to Q V cross B. Particle here is negatively charged, electron. So here, as it is going this way, we'll we will require a force towards the center. V in this direction. If I am uh, using my right hand palm rule, this thumb is representing the motion, fingers in magnetic field direction. So I can see that if I take magnetic field inward, motion is along the thumb. For positive charge, force will be in this direction and for the electron, it will be towards this center. That means here in this region, B1 is normal to the board and inward. Here this particle is moving in this direction and center is lying on this side, motion in this direction. Naturally, I will have to keep my fingers outward only uh, for this case electron will feel a force in this direction because palm gives us the force direction on positive charge particle and here my particle is electron naturally it will feel force toward the center and will follow the semicircular path. That means I can say in this region magnetic field is inward. And in this region, magnetic field is in outward direction. Here we can see this radius is less than this radius. Less radius means more magnetic field. So I can say in this region, magnetic field B1 is more than this region in magnitude. Here B decides time period also, particle is same in both region. So, m by q is the same, but as in this region b is more, naturally time taken by this particle in this region will be less. So, here in this region time period of the particle will be more and in this region magnetic field will be more. In this region magnetic field will be inward and in this region magnetic field will be outward and hence our answer is first. Clear? Question number 30 is related to earth magnetic field, true dip angle and apparent dip angle. In the problem, they have given us angle of declination 30 degree. That means magnetic meridian and geographical meridian are at angle 30 degree. When we place a dip circle in magnetic meridian, it gives us true dip angle. In the problem, it is given 60 degree. When we place the dip circle in some other vertical plane, there we get apparent dip angle. The value of apparent dip angle, if I say is theta dash, then the relation for the apparent dip angle will be tan theta dash equal to tan theta upon cos alpha. Here theta is true dip angle, alpha is the angle this other plane is making with magnetic meridian. The other plane in the problem is given geographical meridian. An angle of declination is also given 30 degree. That means 
other plane is making 30 degree with the magnetic meridian. So, here alpha is 30 degree. Now, if I put this value in this relation, 1060 upon cos 30. 1060 is root 3, cos 30 is root 3 by 2 giving me 2. So, here theta dash is 10 inverse 2 and it is why my answer is 2, option number 2. Problem number 31 is again related to the force on current carrying wire placed in magnetic field. This wire is of the shape of a parabola whose equation is x square plus y equal to 16. Its starting point is somewhere here and it is my last point. As you know, if field is uniform, we can join initial point to final point to get the effective length. So, here this will be my effective length, so the starting point is here and end point is here. Let us calculate the coordinates of the starting point and end point. Here at this line, y coordinate is 0. If I put it here, x square plus 0 equal to 16, giving me x square equal to 16 or x equal to plus minus 4. That means here my x coordinate is plus 4, y is 0 and here x coordinate is minus 4 and y coordinate is 0 and this length, effective length can be represented by a vector L equal to 8i k. Now, I will apply the equation to get the force F equal to I L cross B. I is given 4 ampere, L is 8 I k and B is given 5 k k. So, here answer is 160 I cross k is minus J. Here is my answer. So, option number 3 is my correct answer.